United Against Cancer. Fantastic. We are all united. Hi everyone, this is our Onko Daily interview for today and we're united against cancer. We want to, today we're going to speak to uh, Professor Dilara and, I'm going, and then we'll get into the crux of the matter. As always, my name is Zainab Shinkafi Bagudu, a global cancer advocate and very keen to connect with all the people that are involved in cancer across the world so that together we will be united. Doctor, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Introduce yourself, your name, and your current position, as well as other positions that are relevant to your work in cancer control. Uh, hello, Zainab. I am very glad to see you Hi. again. Yes, I know you for many years and I know that you are a very strong woman <laughs> in your elimination of cervical cancer in, in Africa. Uh, I am Dilara Kaidarova. I am uh, uh, inside gynecology, oncogynecology surgeon, uh, but now my position is director of National Cancer Institute in our country. Uh, it is uh, one of the main institutes in our country and uh, uh, president of uh, associations of oncology associations of our country. Uh, I am a professor, PhD, surgeon. Uh, more than 30 years, I am working only in oncology healthcare system. Uh, I was resident in our, I am studying in our university, uh, Almaty. It is our city, capital city, Almaty. Uh, government the medical institute uh, and then all my life i am working uh, in treating patients uh, in, uh, in oncology uh, I need health, health system yes uh, and now i'm uh, i worked for with all patients not only with uh, gynecology patients, uh, our institute treating patients from all countries. Uh, Kazakhstan is a very huge country, uh, approximately 3 million square meters. We lo uh, we, um, localiz our localizations in Central Asia uh, and uh, more than 20 million uh, populations we have in our country. Okay. Uh, Yes. That's thank you. Thank you for that very concise introduction. Uh, as you know, uh, we were in Kazakhstan some years ago for the World Cancer Leaders Summit of the Union for International Cancer Control, the UICC, and it was indeed a very um, interesting one. A very a lot of um, political advocates, uh, political will, and governmental involvement at the time. Um, you've described your distinguished career and the work that you do in gynae oncology and your involvement in the health system of Kazakhstan. Um, from the time of the World Cancer Leaders Summit um, to now, would you say that the impact of having the highlights on the country, how has it been, you know, the effect of having uh, such a large global meeting in the country? Has it helped to improve or is just the same? Did it bring more focus to um, oncology in your region? Yes. Uh, no, we have, uh, I think, many problems we have in oncology healthcare system in, uh, in our country. Uh, of course, financial problems. In patients haven't access to 
new drugs. Uh, patients haven't access to new uh, radiation therapy equipment. And uh, our country very huge, and uh, we decided to build new oncology centers in each oblast because it is uh, more than 1,000 kilometers between one city to another city. And uh, we talked with our president. Of course, if president is involved in, the, in situations with, with cancer problems, and uh, for us it is very we, we <laughs> like our president because he said for us to create a new cancer control plan in, in our country and uh, include all uh, all all our pro to realize all our problems in our country to build new uh, new cancer centers to buy new uh, equipment not only for radiation therapy Linux but for to build new operating rooms with new equipment for endoscopy surgeon for, huh? for the new devices and uh, and uh, to create new clinical protocols for our patients uh, for chemotherapy for radiations and we worked with ESMO uh, with uh, WHO and they helped us uh, three years ago to uh, create new protocols, clinical protocols with NCCN, yes. And now in our country, we have new protocols. Uh, now in our country, patients have access, free access. All, um, all our uh, treat, uh, treating for patients, cancer treating is free for patients. And uh, they have access for- All cancer. All cancers, yes. For, 40, for 44 uh, targets therapy and the three immunotherapy. And of course, I don't know how many, for all chemo is free for patients. Uh, now, well, it is very, yes, good support for us. But the uh, problems is, uh, was problems with uh, uh, new radiation therapy equipments. And now uh, in that year, we changed the, in the uh, sixth region, uh, all equipments, and now we have uh, new Linux. And in our institute, in our institute, we have uh, four new Linux for treatment and uh, two Toma therapy. And now in uh, our capital, uh, started building for proton therapy. Proton therapy. Proton. Yes. And but have of course, so a lot of but we have pro problems with uh, child cancer. Of course, we have only two what centers. What is that problem? We two have centers. Only two, that... only two centers in our country and problems with uh, lymphoma for transplantations. Wow, it is very bone marrow big problem, yes. Uh, yes, bone marrow transplanted. And now we started in our institute to build new uh, new building uh, for uh, our hematology patients, for, ad for adults. And uh, then, uh, they decided to build new hematology center in the capital of our country. Yes, we have problems, but to realize all this plan, uh, we need five years. And we started from that year, from 2024, and uh, we hope that we will do. If, of course, fi fi finals will be <laughs> every year for us. Everything is. Finance, yes. It's a not to your population is 18 million, 20 million. 20 million. What is the yeah. population? About 20, 20 million. million, yes. Okay. Yes, okay, that's that's noted. Um and so that's uh so now you sorry, go on. I think you have shared some of the strategies that uh 
you have used to uh, improve the healthcare system, uh, particularly when it comes to oncology there, you've shared with us um, the fact that you have free access for patients, all patients, and then you have six um, Linux, six new Linux in the last uh, few years that have come up, as well as um, targeted and immunotherapy drugs available. Uh, chemotherapy is also available, and that is, uh, what would you say about the preventative measures that have been taken for early detection? How do you, I know you work on the Every Woman Study for Ovarian Cancer, for instance, you are one of the uh, co-authors and PIs in that study. Um, so what, and one of the issues that we have with ovarian cancer is late detection. So what, uh, what measures are in place uh, for early, for prevention and early detection of cancer? Is your civil society active or is it all government driven? Yes, uh, in our country, we have government uh, prevention uh, program, three screening we have. It is free for, for our citizens for breast cancer from 40 to 70 for women, uh, for cervical cancer from 30 to 70, and for uh, colorectal cancer for women and uh, men from 50 to 70. It is all free for uh for citizens who have insurance government insurance uh since 20 uh, 2018 our government they created new uh, social insurance fund for all citizens and we need to pay uh every year each citizen they need to pay for this fund but of course more than three million people in our country they didn't pay for this insurance and they haven't access to screening that is problem and now i talked with our new minister of health that we need to change because of course it is easy to prevent cancer than and it was not so cheaper than than, uh, than treat to treat this cancer mm -hmm. and we showed for mm -hmm. them uh, and now they want to change maybe their strategy uh, because government wants that all um, people they need to pay. But for child, for for child, for old older uh, populations, it is free, all free. But who is worked? Uh, Very they need to pay because for that insurance. Yeah, exactly. So is it um, just? workers people that are working or you can pay even if you don't have what happens to the unemployed are they covered by the health insurance because health financing is very important uh topic around the world and for all all, all low middle income countries particularly because of the uh covid pandemic financing health has become a very big issue and we health insurance and universal health coverage, of course, is one of the major ways in which we can achieve if we, uh, good health for all, if we are able to. So does the health insurance system, does it allow people that are not in the non-formal sector, that is, if you are not employed uh, by government, if you're in the private sector, you pay into that insurance, or is there side-by-side -side private insurance and government insurance? No, we have uh, uh, our government insurance. Exactly. Necessary. Huh? Necessary. Necessary. Uh, that we have for our necessary government eh? insurance for all citizens. Uh, it, it is uh, they need to pay every who is not in the uh, uh, in not government system wor worker. They need to pay uh, every year fifty dollars. It is not so huge. Oh, mm. only fifty dollars, and you can receive all. You have access to all, to CT, to MRI, if you have problems. But um, no, people don't understand. Not everybody. That is that. That is cheaper. But of course, we have private uh, sector. 
say a private insurance, but it is only for who want. But if you will pay for government, it is not so huge amount of money, but three million they didn't pay for that and they haven't access it is and uh, we talked with, with our prime minister about that they need to change this uh, politics in our healthcare system uh, but uh, for so very interesting uh, but for but um, after that uh, we created a uh, new like a new strategy in our polyclinics uh, if patients uh, come to polyclinics with uh, dia uh, diagnosis, uh, diagnosis with diagnosis of precancer, precancer, mm -hmm. breast uh, cancer, breast cancer, not breast precancer, okay, pre not pre not pre cancer, uh, precancer, <laughs> precancer lesion, like like the cervical cancer ones. Yes, and. Uh, uh, our GP, they need to put them in green corridor. And during uh -huh. 30 days in polyclinics, they need to put uh, dia uh, diagnosis or not. And uh, it is our oh, new, interesting. Uh, new strat system. <laughs> strategic system, yes. Because... Yeah. Uh, uh, before cancer, they need to pay for CT, for MRI, and uh, somebody say we haven't money for this, uh, we haven't access for that, and that is why we started to do this green corridor for that patients, uh, for that uh, citizens. Interesting. And, yes, and now business. we started. Yes. Very interesting concept. Yes, and it will be it free for patient for patient with pre cancer, mm -hmm. and. Okay. Many, many uh, Others. yes, some yes. with cancer, and they did it's free for them. <laughs> it is <laughs> very interesting. That's good because um, we can talk about prevention. We tell patients go and screen, go and screen. Uh, if we don't provide for them what to do after, then it is a problem. So if we tell them screen and we're going to put you in the green corridor, it's good uh, so that they have, they have um, hope that something will happen to me after I will get, I will be taken care of by the system. Uh, so I think a lot of what we have, uh, you've highlighted the importance in cancer control. Uh, your work has been highlighted and helped and made easier by the political will and support that you have received from the government. And it has helped you a lot in reaching the citizens and making generally cancer better. Is there any question you would like to, or anything more you would like to say? Because yeah, yes, I want to add about our our. Is there anything more? It's fine. We will let it. Yes, I, I want to add about our um, work with elimination of cervical cancer. We have screening, but uh, so since... tell us about your cervical cancer elimination program. Yes. Yes, of there. course. We, mm. In our country, problems that uh, during these ten years. Uh, the cervical cancer are increasing uh, and the uh, mortality is stable. And uh, we, before we haven't our vaccination program and uh, uh, last year we talked with our Minister of Health and uh, they decided to uh, introduce in, cal uh, in calendar of uh, calendar vaccination this uh, HPV vaccine. Oh, it was 10 years my work with all government with deputies with uh, i don't know we did many round tables we did i, in, I hear you i might <laughs> double it all from er uh, from all yes. i don't know where from was uh, many round tables with igcs with uacc and uh, since uh, 2024 yes 2024 IGCS. Yes, we uh, they bought this HPV vaccine and uh, 
we will start our vaccination program for girls in September. Congratulations. Yes, it is. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm crying and still for all of them because yes. young, young woman died every day. Two, two women died in our country every day from cervical cancer. From cervical, cervical cancer. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I have similar story. Uh, but when you get there, it's worth it. We had a long journey, a lot of advocacy, like you mentioned, uh, similar partners, and uh, it will start last year, 2023. Today, we have vaccinated 12 million girls with HPV vaccine in yes. the short time. So <laughs> now a lot of work. So it's very, very very fulfilling and I you are there already once you have a date it's just to start when you start it's it's over you have the number so congratulations well done thank well you, done. Thank thank you, you for thank sharing you. that with us don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to Anka Daily on YouTube hit the bell icon to stay update